you, but today I learned many things. <laughs> I learned that actually astronomers don't have all the ingredients with them, or they don't know many of the ingredients in the universe. Cooks, we do. <laughs> and it's funny that she's using liquid nitrogen when I use liquid nitrogen to cook. And I'm so happy we found water in very distant, faraway countries, very faraway planets. With water, I can cook. I know I'll have a job forever. Why I'm here? I would love to believe it's because I have something important to share with you. But I have a feeling that all my TED friends, in a very busy weekend in Washington, they wanted the excuse of why to ask me for a reservation. They invite me to speak, they got the place. But here, but here we are, we are here to talk about more important things. I'm a chef. I'm a chef and I cook for the few, but really I want to be cooking for the world. I want to create a spark. And how we create a spark being a chef? We create the spark through creativity. I know lunch is coming. <laughs> Are you hungry? <laughs> Sometimes guys, to be creative, the only thing we have to be doing is, why not, looking at the stars, maybe Andromeda, or maybe a faraway galaxy. It's a way to get inspired. I just got inspired by this amazing presentation. Sometimes you only have to do a simple thing as this. I'm gonna start now. Why? Because the world needs me to start. But creativity doesn't happen, you know, in the middle of a beach, doing nothing, under a palm tree, no. I never create anything in the beach. I only get born by the sun. <laughs> Actually, creativity will only happen when I am surrounded by high energy environments that keeps all these ideas coming and coming and keeps you alive. Well, sometimes to look for new creative ways, we don't need to look into the big things. We need to concentrate in the small ones. Sometimes we need to be looking into the big ones because it can be what creates a small idea. What is big can be small. What's small can become huge. We have no time to waste. But in order to be creative, people of the world, we have to make sure that we will not be afraid to look beyond the horizon that we don't know what's behind. To take really that challenge of saying, I'm gonna move away from my comfort zone and I'm gonna reach beyond what I don't know. This is really how we become creative, where sometimes light can be what make us blind or what give us the light that help us to begin with a new creation. Sometimes use a simple piece of paper Writing one word or one phrase can begin something amazing. But here is where the important thing starts. Sometimes very simple ideas, very simple ideas can achieve fascinating things. Take a look at something like we have in front of us every day of our lives. How many of you had a glass of water today? Great, what did you do with that besides drinking it? You didn't talk to it, you didn't ask, what can I do today with this glass of water that has never been done before? Well, funny thing is that if I take risks and if I move away from my comfort zone, that meaning not going to the market to get inspired or opening a cookbook to get inspiration, but maybe going to Harvard or MIT where I have no clue what those scientists are talking about but I'm taking the risk to making a fool of myself only because it's worth it. And I understand that I can defy gravity. And I can control the water by understanding the pressure that, the low pressure that this form inside and understanding a little bit about water surface tension. Wow, I am being creative right here, right now. At the end, guys, you know, a simple ingredient like water can be helping me to come up with something fascinating from a very old ingredient. And water is quite old. But at the low end, I can learn new 
new ways to cook in a clean and efficient way. You know, guys, we've been cooking with fire for hundreds of thousands of years. That was almost the beginning of creativity in cooking. Yes? But this is so funny. Today, hundreds of thousands of years after we began controlling fire, we use that same fire to cook on a Sunday for the friends. Why? Because we are rich and powerful and we have the charcoal and we have the money to buy the meat that can feed our friends. And because we are men and we know how to cook. <laughs> but this is not laughing. Hundreds of millions of years of evolution. Reaching to the stars, going to the moon. And still people are living lives as we used to live them hundreds of thousands of years ago. This is what the advance of humanity has helped for, for having people that to achieve fire. What takes me a second, it takes them hours. They have to search for the wood. That these girls get in danger because they are alone in the forest, in the middle of nowhere. They can be raped because they are looking for the fuel to cook the food. They have no time to go to school, so they have no future because they receive no education. Wow, and here we come to corn, a grain that is everywhere to be found in America. Thousands of years, civilizations living around corn. So let me show you creativity. With corn, we feed the cattle, when actually we should, feel, we should feed the cattle with the grass. It's a smarter, but no, we use it to feed those cattle that will produce meat. And with corn, we're able to come up with oil that is going to fry those potatoes. And with corn, we can make syrup that helps us to make ketchup. And believe it or not, with corn, also, we can make a great soda. Wow! With corn, even we are able, guys, to make the paper. Creativity at its best. <laughs> I cannot be that, guys. So, the fun part is that I could be telling you how many things are wrong about this, but the truth is that a burger is the paradigm of the complexities of how we feed humanity. But I'm not gonna be only blaming them. We are all here to be blamed. It's the responsibility of everyone to be feeding people. Actually, you know one thing? You think that people come into my restaurants, me, the great chef, Jose Andres, I am not part of the obesity problem? Or you know what about the environment? Who puts more CO2, me or the fast food companies? A fast food restaurant receives two deliveries a week, if, you know how many I receive? Sometimes 50 or 60. I need to be pragmatic if we want to feed the world. Actually, put more CO2 in the environment than maybe those fast food companies that sometimes we complain about. But no, I'm not being paid by them. I only know that I need to be pragmatic if I want my voice to be respected and we can use creativity to bring everyone to the table and bring riches. Are you with me? So here, I'm gonna show you my creativity. Who likes almonds? Come on, are you hungry? Are you hungry, above? Great. Who likes cheese? Almonds and cheese, right? That's simple. Piece of cake. Let me show you what I do when I'm willing to move away from my comfort zone. I'm pushing the envelope. Let me show you creativity my way. I think this is the first cooking video in the history of TED. Almonds are being fried. Olive oil. Those almonds are brown, tasty. We add water, the same water that we may find. We may find in a very distant planet in another galaxy. And here we're gonna be blending those almonds. And we are gonna be freezing that almond puree. And we're gonna use technology. And we're gonna be making this amazing puree of almonds. Like almond butter. 
Now we're gonna be using some cream. We're gonna be mixing again. Any food critic here? Great, I'm lucky. And now we add liquid nitrogen. And take, take a look when we move from the comfort zone, what can we do for the field? By getting a ladle, beautiful metal ladle. We're able to introduce it into this milk of almonds. And a very thin layer is gonna be attached to the ladle. We reintroduce the ladle, we change the temperature, and we're gonna be able to separate the almond. The almonds were hard, they become liquid, they are hard again, but now we change the texture. We have the power to do that. We have the power to use creativity. And you can do one, and you can do another. And this is telling me that there is hope because we can do amazing things with simple ingredients. If we apply heat, it melts again. We get the cheese. And we are gonna show you how to make a mousse that actually, if we want it, I could make that same mousse without cream and fat, only water. Only water. No more fat in mousses. But this one has cheese. We make the mousse, we fill up the beautiful almond cups. People of America, two humble ingredients, elevated to a new dimension. Great. So this is creativity for a chef. But how can I put this creativity that only fits the few to fit the many? Briat Savaran, 1826, one of the most amazing food philosophers in the history of mankind. The destiny of nations depends on the manner in which they feed themselves. Wow, I think our politicians, but also ourselves, we've forgotten such an amazing, powerful, powerful phrase. You know, I've, almost two centuries after he wrote this, still we face, sometimes in America, but around the world, obesity and hunger. How is possible that some we can be so overweight and others barely know what to put into their mouth? But you know, I would love to talk to you about how to produce the food. But today I wanna to talk to you about how we cook and handle that food, because it can be equally as important. We need to make sure that we start, we need to stop throwing money into the problems and really start investing in true, true solutions and understanding the power of food and the power of cooking and creativity. This could be a great beginning. Take a look at this. This is Haiti. You see the garbage? Where do you think this garbage came from, people? Where? It came from overseas. Yes, we had goodwill. We went there to help. But look all the trash we bring with ourselves in the process of helping. No one really is even thinking about it, how to take care of the garbage. Creativity and cooking and thinking about food can help us to move this forward. I had a friend that had this simple, humble idea of getting a newspaper. You are Republican, you know why, which one to use. You are Democrat too. <laughs> and he had a party, but he didn't have a lot of money. And he needed a creative way to be saving money. And was a designer that did such a simple thing as grabbing a piece of paper, a simple piece of paper, and transforming the beautiful paper in something so simple as a place to put peanuts. Peanuts that you will have the plate to support the peanuts that will allow you to eat them. And you'll have the place to put the garbage next. <laughs> Simple ideas, people, can be helping to feed the world. But we need to keep thinking and thinking hard. A newspaper can only be the beginning. But take a look at this. What do we have here? Here we have clean cook stoves. A woman cooking with wood and charcoal. But those 
cook stoves are cleaner now. Cleaner means that even if she's using wood and charcoal, she's using probably 60 to 70% less. So by using less, we cut less trees. By leaving trees in the forest, the rain that we are supposed to be celebrating, because rain means water and water means life, that rain doesn't create life. That rain creates death because we cut the trees. Nothing, no roots to give life to that soil. The water comes down the mountains, takes away lives, homes, the only fertile soil that we have left. Wow. And we could be using this to make briquettes with paper and organic matter that can help us to have clean cook stoves that are part of the solution, feeding people, giving them opportunity, taking care of the environment, all with a simple idea. I use many clean cook stoves. Some use briquettes. Other ones use pellets. Other ones use charcoal. But other ones will use alcohol. It's hope. We know how to do it. We know how to feed people. But we need to be really investing in true research and development. Because research and development cannot be only part of the big corporations of the world. If we don't start applying creativity, research and development into the third world, we will never have hope for those people that need it the most. And this was my simple contribution. Why we don't cook with CO2, zero emissions? Solar kitchens is not the only way. I believe in many ways. But this is almost the dream way. I went there many times, not trying to impose the white man philosophy, but trying to listen. Because these people in the third world, they only want from us, not our pity, but our respect. And they want us to listen to them so we can really help them and not imposing solutions that no one believes in. And I did a simple thing. Creativity. The same creativity you saw. Creativity that I used to feed six people. I painted black. With black, we attract the sun. With the sun, we are able to steam water very, very quick. As quick as that, and forgive me for the video, was with my phone. I am cooking lentils and only using the sun. Clean cook stoves are a great way to cook. Use, guys, creativity in cooking can help solve, can really help solve the biggest challenges in our world. Creativity can be the way to teach people again how to feed themselves by giving them the power of knowing how to cook. Through education, we can achieve that. Education and creativity will be key. If we really give people, like in Haiti, the tools through creativity to feed themselves, the world has hope. Cooking is what makes us uniquely human is what differentiates us from everyone else on this earth. Creativity in cooking, guys, can give us hope that we may have a better world tomorrow. I would like to use another phrase of Brian Savaran. Show me what you eat and I will tell you who you are. Important phrase. But I will ask Mr. Briat Savaran to allow me in a humble way, to help me update this powerful phrase. I think from now on should be, show me how you cook, and I will tell you who you really are. My name is Jose Andres. I know I feed the few, but I really want to be part of the solution 
of feeding the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>